first want to say that um, I've been a fan of John's films for years. Um, I think he has a great handle on storytelling for sure, but also imbuing uh, a, a variety of uh, films and a variety of stories with an energy and a passion and a humanity. Um, and with that, I want to welcome you here today. Thank you. Thank and um, so please that uh, you're getting to speak with uh, an audience that um, I've been participating in for a few years. Yeah, it's um, great to be here. Um, yeah, I mean, for, for me, I, I grew up in the Bay Area in Palo Alto. So, um, and my parents came over from, my mom's from Taiwan, my dad's from mainland China, moved around a lot. They started a restaurant in Palo Alto called Chef Chews. It's been there for 46 years now. Go, <laughs> if you're there, <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, great. Um, so I grew up in a restaurant, Chinese restaurant specifically, and um, and my and I, I got to make videos when I was a kid, and uh, in the Silicon Valley at a time when uh, digital video was just starting to happen, and so uh, we'd have people from Apple or Sun Microsystems or Adobe know that oh, Chef Chu's son was really into editing, and so they would bring in their digital. Uh, their digitizers basically. This is like in the early 90s and so it wasn't quite where it is now. And so I got to learn all this stuff very early. Um, they gave it to me basically. Every couple months I get new computers and new software with no manuals so I'd have to figure it out. But, um, but it was great. My, my dad never uh, let me actually work at the restaurant. He wanted us to do everything we couldn't right. do, so he put us into uh, dance classes, instruments. I took drums, saxophone, violin, guitar, piano. Uh, I went to th the theater every weekend, whether it was musical season, ballet season, or opera season in San Francisco, sports camps, animation camps. So it was a very open environment. Um, I was the youngest of five kids, so I got to do, I got to be creative and mm. have confidence. And my mom would always tell me if, um, you know, if you ever, feel resistance to uh, people treating you differently because how you look or where you come from, um, don't, don't let that affect you. Just sure. be better sure. and, 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 and make them need you. Sure. Uh, so for my whole life, I've never, uh, I'm not an activist. I don't, uh, I've always n tried not to do uh, something that's about necessarily the Asian side of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to be known as a filmmaker and be compared to uh, other filmmakers sure. and not have that a part of it. Mm -hmm. It was only, I would say, recently as I get older, um, tomorrow's my birthday, so <laughs> as I get, as I get older and older mm -hmm. and I'm no longer the youngest guy in the room, mm -hmm. um, I sort of looked at my career and looked at my life and, and was deciding, this is probably like two years ago, uh, what I'm trying to say um, because one, I, I love big movies. I love going to the movies. That I, the event of having an audience laugh and boo and scream at the theater, and then have dinner after and talk all about it is my my favorite. But at that time, at, about two years ago, I was thinking, well, what am I trying to say, and um, and why the reason that I've had it pretty easy in terms of not having to deal with any sort of um, resistance because of me being Asian in any way mm -hmm. um, was because there are people before me that did a lot of the work, that mm -hmm. fell on the sword, created the path. Mm -hmm. And so I felt this sort of deep thing inside me of like, I've done a lot of sequels, done a lot of franchise <laughs> movies. Let's, I want to explore this side of my, as an artist, you want to explore all the sides of your brain mm -hmm. and your heart. And um, this is something that I've been, so, I've been wanting to do. So I went to China, went to Beijing several times in the year to meet with different companies, uh, see the content. I actually wanted to do like a Chinese language film just to like throw myself in there. We have one for you after this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, and uh, so then I was uh, reading a bunch of stuff and talking to a bunch of people and, and nothing really connected with me creatively. Creatively, uh, I didn't want to force anything. And then um, my sister, my mother, my cousins, <laughs> my friends were like, you've got to read this book, Crazy Rich Asians. Um, it's really fun. And so uh, I read it, and I loved it, and found out that John and Nina Jacobson and, and Brad Simpson were all involved. To, and, to give you a little bit of background of yeah. how John, we knew we wanted John years ago. He just didn't know it. But uh, uh, Nina Jacobson and Brad Simpson uh, of Color Force, terrific producers of 
you know, wonderful films, including a little film called uh, Hunger Games and that franchise and many, many others and great TV, had acquired this book. Um, when we started our company, for us, it represented the perfect balance of Western filmmaking possibilities and um, its, fo its clear focus in Asia. Uh, we partnered with uh, Color Force at the time and then took some time and took us three years to securitously get to John. Um, and I guess about six months ago, um, we finally had a draft that we thought kind of got there and John uh, was nice enough to read it and what was I crazy is I, my <laughs> my sister so I read it maybe like two years ago and then my sister emailed me this weekend be like why aren't you doing crazy rich Asians again I was like oh I forgot about that <laughs> so I reached out to my agent and he's like oh I have the script I'll send it to you and then the next day he's like how did you know they sent it to you this is on a Sunday I talked to him on a Monday and he's like how did you know they sent it on Friday for you that's I was like, totally. I, I did not story. know that they ever sent it to me. So it was a really one of those th moments, and um, and you know, I'm not, sh I'm not that superstitious. But when that thing happens, you're like, I'm meant to do this movie. I'm born to do this movie. Uh, it's about the Asian American identity with Rachel Chu coming into this world, that sort of in between world of f knowing that you're all American kid, mm -hmm. but then going to a place that feels like home and being surrounded by that and then being confused, am I this or am I that? And then realizing, oh, I'm not that right. either. And so where am I? So and, had you had so, a Rachel experience, I mean, clearly yeah. in that genre where you're expected to have understood the minutia of a particular culture that while obviously in, it's you, it, it lives inside you, but it's not it hasn't been manifested in the first 20 years of your life or so. Yeah, I definitely, uh, when I visited Taiwan when I was probably really young, mm -hmm. um, I had this sense of, it was almost like you don't realize when you go someplace that you're going to feel these emotions of this feels very comfortable and nobody's, I don't you don't feel looked at, you don't, you just feel like everybody's a relative, I don't know, it's a weird thing. Yeah. Uh, and I still don't quite understand it. Felt at it. home. It felt at home. home. Yeah. Uh, and then I went to Hong Kong and they started calling, calling me Guaylo. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I actually made, a, I made one short film when I was a kid mm -hmm. about this experience and it was so bad, <laughs> but I had to sort of get it out of my system and it was so cheesy and super like, um, but the, the, that experience definitely always stayed mm -hmm. with me. And um, so then you just try to find your way and, and, and you look at content that's on the big screen, on the small screen that speak to that. And since I was, f I guess, I, I don't know if you consider it first generation, second generation, whatever it is, when you're born, the first generation born here, I feel, felt like all my friends were the first of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. uh, this was, I was born in 1979, so like that wave of voice, that wave of perspective, mm -hmm. um, uh, is coming now. It's right. happening now, right. and then even the younger yeah. generations are even more free to speak about this uh, dual identity. And, and and in the movie, it definitely taps into that. But it taps into not just that, but the fi family dynamics of what your family expects of you and your traditions and right. your and family first. Whereas here in America, it's like. Just be happy. Just do whatever makes you happy. And that's not necessarily the best thing, but like those east west philosophies colliding, in, uh, coming into a sort of a collision course right. of this woman, this strong mother, and the grandmother with this uh, American girl, I think is a really cool dynamic. So if you haven't read the, the book, um, you should, um, first of all. And there's a uh, second book that's come out, and there will be a third. But the story revolves around um, Rachel Chu, who's a American-born Chinese uh, woman who is currently a professor at NYU in New York and um, through a series of events in a, a very special relationship is uh, invited to Singapore for the first time and that starts our journey. So, uh, so she, she clearly, um, um, John's had some of those experiences and we, we uh, document those or we, in, in our story, we um, uh, weave a kind of an interesting path for her journey back home. Mm -hmm. And what I love about it is it's, it's an all Asian cast um, of all walks of life in, in Asia. So it's like Asian Americans, it's Singapore Chinese, it's Korean, uh, <laughs> Korean it's uh, Taiwan, it's what they feel about mainland uh, China, and it's, and it's class and it's cultures, um, all sort of colliding, which 
uh, was really exciting. And, and, and in terms of roles, all types of roles for Asian actors uh, of all shapes and sizes, all ages, all, some are crass and materialistic and others are noble and heroes. And um, it just goes against all the things that I think we've been presented um, for the most part on, uh, on the big screen. And so that's what I'm really excited for. And actually when we were, even doing auditions, like we're going through that process right now and, 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 and meeting all these hundreds and hundreds of people all around the world, Asian actors who, um, who are amazingly talented, and you look through their resume, and I've been looking at each one and what they've done in the past. I mean, it's kind of sad to see that all the cliches are in their IMDb page, and it's not their fault. It's not. It's it's the the the, the, the content that's out there. It's the thing that are it starts on the page, or mm -hmm. who, and and it starts uh, before they ever get on of what these characters are and who they are as real human beings, as layered human beings, not just some. Uh, token here yeah. or there. So I think one of the most exciting things about developing the script with Nina and Brad, and then uh, uh, more recently with John and a uh, terrific Malaysian woman who came on that John's worked with previously, a woman named Adele Lim, was first and foremost get the narrative correct. Who cares about the ethnicity for the moment? Um, and then really make sure they're, you're touched by these journeys. And, and it was great to see John and Adele work on that to crack the humanity of the, of the uh, film. And now making sure the, uh, the authenticity is there also. That's, I feel like we've made the movie 10 times already. I can't believe we have to actually go shoot it now. But the, the, that's been a great journey and having John weigh in and say, you know, you're just not getting that right. And I think that's probably more of that journey to happen. Um, yeah, as we absolutely. And, and for to have Adele, uh, who's from Malaysia, uh, write the script, one, just as a strong woman, uh, she, she brought that voice to, to Rachel and to the rest of the characters in the, in the script. And also, she just has a sense of what it's like to live there and the food and the, and the customs and the things that I don't even know. And so mm -hmm. that's, I think, something that we've all sat down and credit to all the producers to recognize that when you take on um, a movie like this, as fun and as light as it is, because ultimately it's a really fun romantic comedy, um, and we try not to lose sight of every, any of that, but there is an importance to what we're trying to do here, and it means you have to spend more money to go find your cast. You have to dig a little deeper. You have to take more time. You have to think unconventional just in the casting because the system isn't built yet for, for those people. Some of them, probably the best ones that we're gonna find aren't even represented because there are no roles for dashing, leading Asian American men um, in, 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 uh, at least on, on the yep. screen right now. So uh, I think it takes a partnership that both, all sides, understands that this is important and that it's not business as usual um, and that uh, the, everyone is willing to roll up their sleeves yep. and get to work because uh, that's how important it is to set this off. And yep. hopefully if we make number one, just a fun, great movie that no matter who you are, where you are, where you come from, that you enjoy, then others w can take this model and, and do more and, and continue. So. Yeah, we talk about that a lot because we were fortunate enough to have Warner Brothers come on as our worldwide partner. And a lot of that was to help um, 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 validate, I guess, in some ways, the value of having a all Asian cast and a, um, a, and a Hollywoodized version of this film uh, play around the world. Uh, but I do want to recognize that John, Jonathan mentioned that we're, um, I guess, recently one of the uh, uh, first studio supported all Asian cast film. But in fact, Janet, who was up here a moment ago, led the way with Joy Luck Club, um, um, and, uh, which turned out to be a hugely successful film. And we talked a little bit about, even with that success, why didn't that trend continue where, now, different story, different time, but why didn't that trend of serving a terrifically inclined Asian audiences worldwide to engage in? We had a conversation about that, and we're, we're aware of that. We're not putting too much pressure on ourselves, but the fact is we feel like we have another chance to follow the great work Janet did. Um, and that, and I, By the way, I remember as a kid 
our whole family taking a trip to the movie theater to watch Joy Luck Club. I think we watched it three times and quote the movie, I'm your auntie, all those things uh, from the movie. And so it did, I mean, just on my level, on my family level, it had such impact. And I think that like, <clears throat> it has to be on, and I don't know, I was, I was young at the time, so I don't know all the analytics of why it, the trend didn't continue or not, um, especially since it was a, a hit. Um, but to me, I think the community also has to be ready. There has to be a unification of everybody. And for the first time, again, like I said, I'm not an activist. I don't tweet, I don't do a Twitter storm and all that stuff. But I see everybody who does do that. Uh, and this whitewashed out movement uh, and the Oscar So White movement. And it has real impact. I think that's what people don't, I think people do it and they feel good about themselves. But what they don't really realize also is that it actually does effect on the ground. When I go to these meetings, uh, specifically in the last month, those conversations can be had, whether it's Mulan or our movie or other things coming down the pipeline. Those conversations uh, are affected because of this community that is being built out of years and years of keeping quiet and finding some platform to now speak as a, a unified whole. Um, it definitely helped our movie going yeah. in, seeing that all the studios wanted to be a part of it, that an all Asian cast with not with, with no guarantee of any sort of star in it. Um, that's not a China movie, that it's an Asian American movie, which are two very different voices. I think it's extraordinary. I think we're living in a really uh, exciting time for uh, Asian American filmmakers, writers, creators of all platforms, uh, and performers. And I think that the tricky thing is to tell, like, the reason why I'm saying it now is to tell everybody that it does have a real effect. It doesn't just go into the Twitter sphere and disappear. Um, it's having on the ground stuff. Yeah, it was an extraordinary uh, sequence of meetings where even three years ago, which is you know um, a lifetime but only a blip, um, how the tenor of those conversations have changed is remarkable. And I think it's a lot to do with organizations like this, events like this, and John's right. It kind of is that, just you will it into existence. And the more the conversation revolves around both the financial success for sure, obviously that's a big determinant. There's, there's uh, markets who are open to, and we've seen many, many successes over the last uh, several years. Uh, but you do really have to kind of continue to will it into existence. And I will say this about uh, John, in those meetings, um, <clears throat> John never wavered, and th for the most part, the students were receptive, but it was just a fait accompli, and it's kind of how, how you approach the situation. It wasn't asking permission. It was, this is what's happening, and that was a, um, for me, that was kind of a very revelatory moment um, over the last three years where you're kind of done ex you don't have to explain over and over again. People are getting it now. And um, the work with this film and hopefully many, many other films are just, you know, the, the, the place has been earned. And, and, and I think that next step is for more to be pitching out there so that, because there is an appetite. Yeah. But two, for us to do the job right, yeah. um, I do believe that my experience in the last eight years of making movies has prepped me to now do this movie as well as I can and make a very entertaining film and mm -hmm. hopefully the community then is ready to come and watch and enjoy a great movie, mm -hmm. uh, but that's up to the movie gods. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, then, and, and, and in that process, we even come into questions that I don't think we know the answer. If we're, gonna, if we're trying to be the like, answer to how you're supposed to approach material like this, there are questions that we don't even know the answer. For instance, like when we're looking at all these actors, are we allowed to cast a Korean uh, actor for a Chinese role? Are we allowed to uh, uh, hire a half Chinese uh, person for a this other role? Are we supposed to keep the leads as true as possible? And yet, this, and there's so many, I guess there's no rules written, and um, that is challenging for me. I mean, I'm asked if, I mean, as we, I'm gathering my friends and my family members and, 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 and people who blog just to get a sense of like, what are we actually, we've asked the world, we've asked Hollywood to be more respectful, but what are we actually supposed to do now that we have a movie like this? And it is confusing, it is hard. It limits your 
your your bandwidth of, of actors that you can see from this to this, right. especially if like, oh, the Asian actor has to be Chinese and have an English accent, and he has to be charming and dashing, and he has to be a movie star, and he has to have some, some sort of uh, experience so that he's not so green. Uh, oh, and you know, I, so many things. And that is a very difficult position uh, so we have, I don't know, I don't know the answers other than so I, it's and, I, and I think that's part of the journey and that's part of the, the, um, uh, the path to, you know, I'm sure hopefully we'll get a lot right and we may get something a little wrong, but that's, you have to kind of plow in to, um, to, to know where the pitfalls are. Um, I think the, uh, the, about this, the casting issue, this is, it's funny, we're again confronted with a real life instance. A lot of, you mentioned this, um, Briefly, a lot of great Asian actors or Asian actors are not represented. I mean, we take for granted that um, in the U.S. system we have a you know highly highly refined um, um, operation where you could put together casting sessions and and that's something where in a growing market there there's just not that availability. So we're going to be doing open castings around the world. We're going to be doing things that are slightly. Um, 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 uh, unique to a bigger studio film uh, for you know significant roles in the movie. The good thing is I've done dance movies, and you got to find dancers out of the cracks of wherever. Yep. And He's so done we've done a lot of this stuff. So I really do feel like I've been prepped <laughs> perfectly to make yeah. this movie. Yeah. So um, do we open up to? Did I get this exactly right? At one second. Did That's open right. Up to? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Is that when it turned red? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, any questions for John? Or? Thanks very much, both of you. Is this on? Yes. Yeah, hey, I'm Jonathan Landreth with China File. Um, I've watched your movies. I love them. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank um, you. I'm curious to know um, whether you envision this picture you're working on together as being one that will have two versions, one that plays to the American audience, and one that plays perhaps in China, where there's a different rubric for what's passable by the censors. Uh, I know we've debated that in the past, but I think what we've come to the conclusion of, and who knows what happens in the future, but to me, I'm like, a movie's a movie. Um, to do two movies in one is like, I don't know. I only know how to make a movie that I love. And if people like it, great. And I've had movies that people don't like, and oops, sorry. but. Um, I think as a filmmaker, you, you have to trust that your instincts are the thing that you fall back on and that if you, you feel proud to represent this thing and to then translate that with somebody else for an audience that I don't really know either. Um, luckily, my movies have done well in China, the ones that have been released there. And so there's something that maybe from my upbringing, there's a connection there. I don't know. I can't explain that, but it's been actually, uh, that's the only thing I can really do. So. I favor not doing that. I think it's kind of uh, strange. For, and we will do for, some of the characters, like uh, the grandmother who would speak Mandarin. We'll, she'll speak Mandarin in the film. There will yeah. be a certain part of that. The authenticity will come from the character that's um, uh, portrayed. Yeah. Uh, hi, John. I'm Zing. I'm from USC. Uh, actually, hi. I was right a on. dancer when I was back in China. I watched all your films, LXD, you. <laughs> Step Up. Yeah, nice. uh, it was so impressing. And I'm wondering if you see like dance movie, are you going to continue to explore the dance subject in your future, especially cooperation with China? And my another question is, um, as an Asian American, how you value your pro and cons advantage and disadvantage when you doing co uh, pro, uh, co uh, when you making a, a movie catering to Chinese audience or doing some co-production? Mm -hmm. Well, one, uh, I was never a great dancer except if I had a few drinks, <laughs> but uh, I love dancers. I love the language of dance. I think movement is the most beautiful language. It comes from when we first are born and how we communicate. So for me, it's always in everything that I do, in subconsciously or consciously. I would love to work with more. I think dance is just progressing in crazy ways right now. And you might see a couple dance numbers in Crazy Rich Asians. Who knows? <laughs> but um, the in terms of um, uh, 
my sort of future endeavor of, 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 of crossing over into China stuff and how I uh, uh, frame that, I guess. I don't know, it's a, it's a hard one. Like I said, I can only make the movies that I understand and that I love. And um, I think a lot of it would be spending time in China to just get to know how it feels to be there. Um, we went on to some such cool streets in Beijing where all these artists are like performing on the streets and painting. And it was just a really cool vibe that um, I would love to explore more. I, I honestly think it's, it's not forcing anything. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's going there. Of course, you can force a movie. You can just do whatever. But I really think for me, especially um, as I get older, is something, uh, find something that I care about when I go and, and, and see if there's anything that matches sort of that, that feeling. One more. One more. Good morning. I'm Andrew from Asian Entertainment Television. I want to ask you, John Chu, do you foresee a near future where it is no longer novel or noteworthy to see an Asian name in a big budget Hollywood production? That to see an Asian name is just a matter of fact. Yeah, I definitely see that. I think it's inevitable. I think we have an amazing, creative group of filmmakers and writers coming up the ranks right now that are going to blow it out of the water, that have no sense of, oh, it's such an honor to be here, like none of that shit. <laughs> like, these guys are bold, they're rebels, they're going to, we're, we're, you know, we're sort of helping to open up those things, but like, this next voice is so incredible, and, I'm, and, and, and they don't have to wait for permission from anybody, so I'm really excited. When you look at something like Masters of None, or you look at any of the stuff that's happening, a lot of stuff that's happening on television, um, I love that it's not. Um, I know, I know where, that it's going to happen because I already feel that as an Asian American when I look at things. And I know that that is being a American American kid, that that is possible for everyone to because I, that's how I grew up. So uh, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a really great time. I think there's a lot of work to do, but I think everyone's ready to do it. And, 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 and the fact that everybody's here today to, to help push that forward, I think, is a, is a great sign.